Hello and welcome to another episode of today's GK. I am Pooja Devedi and in this segment we bring to you objective questions on a daily basis to help you crack prelims. So let's begin with the practice question of the last segment. Which of the following countries is the largest producer of jackfruit in the world? So many of you have answered it correctly in the comment segment. The correct answer to this question is option A that is India. There has been a recent increase in export of jackfruit due to the popularity of vegan products in Europe. India is the largest producer of jackfruit in the world. Moving ahead, consider the following statements with respect to monoclonal antibodies. They are artificially created antibodies that aim to aid the body's natural immune system. Monoclonal antibodies can be used to treat COVID, Ebola and HIV. We have to select the correct statement. So, the correct answer to this question is option C because both these statements are correct. Let's move on to the explanation. Recently, the Apollo Hospital in Delhi has started an antibody cocktail treatment for COVID-19 patients who have mild symptoms and comorbidities such as diabetes, BP, cancer. It comprises neutralizing monoclonal antibodies. They are artificially created antibodies that aim to aid the body's natural immune system. They target a specific antigen, a protein from the pathogen that induces an immune response. Monoclonal antibodies can be created in the lab by exposing the white blood cells to a particular antigen. And monoclonal antibodies are now relatively common. They are also used in treating Ebola, HIV and psoriasis. Moving ahead, consider the following statements with respect to India's highest civilian award that is the Bharat Ratna. A maximum of three Bharat Ratna awards can be given each year upon the recommendations made by the Prime Minister to the President. A monetary grant of Rs 5 lakh is associated with the award and it can be awarded to Indian citizens only. So what do we have to do? We have to select the correct statement. If we talk about the first statement with respect to Bharat Ratna, a maximum of three Bharat Ratna awards can be given each year upon the recommendations made by the PM to the President. This is definitely correct. But the second statement is saying that a monetary grant of Rs 5 lakh is associated with this award is incorrect because no monetary grant is associated with this award. And it is not stated anywhere that it can be awarded to Indian citizens only. So the third statement is also incorrect. The correct answer to this question would be option A. Instituted in the year 1954, Bharat Ratna is the highest civilian award of India. It is awarded in recognition of exceptional service towards any field of human endeavor without distinction of race, occupation, position or sex. A maximum of three Bharat Ratna awards can be given each year upon the recommendations made by the Prime Minister to the President of India. And you have to also remember the word maximum because the statement for the prelims exam could be distorted by saying a minimum of three Bharat Ratnas. So keep that in mind. On confirmation of the award, the recipient receives a sanat, that is certificate, signed by the President and a medallion. No monetary grant is associated and there is no written provision that Bharat Ratnas should be awarded to Indian citizens only. Moving ahead, Viper Rover, recently seen in the news, is launched by which of the following organizations or institutes? It is launched by NASA, National Aeronautics and Space Administration. Now what is Viper? NASA's Volatiles Investigating Polar Exploration Rover or Viper is a mobile robot that will go to the south pole of the moon to get a close-up view of the location and concentration of water ice that could eventually be harvested to sustain human exploration to the moon, the Mars and beyond. That means in order to reduce the cost of providing water for such missions, this is important. Viper is planned for the delivery to the lunar surface in the late 2023. Moving ahead, which of the following are the conditions for the emergence of tropical cyclones? large and continuous supply of warm and moist air, strong Coriolis force, absence of strong vertical winds, and unstable conditions through troposphere. So, we have to select the correct statement. Yes, there should be a large and continuous supply of warm and moist air for the formation of tropical cyclones and that is the reason why Arabian Sea and Bay of Bengal are producing so many cyclones as the surface temperature is rising day by day due to climate change. There should also be strong Coriolis force and absence of strong vertical winds. Keep this word in mind. And unstable conditions throughout the troposphere which is the layer of atmosphere. So all being correct, the correct answer would be option D. 
Conditions that are necessary for the emergence of tropical cyclones are large and continuous supply of warm and moist air that can release enormous latent heat, strong Coriolis force that can prevent filling of low pressure at the center, unstable conditions throughout the troposphere that creates local disturbance, local disturbance around which a cyclone develops. That local disturbance here means the disturbance in disturbance in one particular region. And absence of strong vertical winds wedge, which disturbs the vertical transport of latent heat. If there wouldn't be any strong vertical winds, then only the proper transportation of latent heat is possible. The New START Treaty, recently seen in the news, is between which of the following countries? It is between USA and Russia. And recently, Russia raised concerns over the USA's implementation of the New START Nuclear Arms Control Treaty and said, the number of US launches and bombers exceeded the agreed limit. The New START Treaty is a treaty between the US and the Russian Federation on measures for the further reduction and limitation of strategic offensive arms. That means in order to reduce the number of arms possessed by each of these countries, this treaty came into being. It entered into force on 5th of February 2011 and is a successor to the START framework of 1991 at the end of the Cold War that is. Moving ahead, consider the following statements with respect to Indian Coast Guard. It operates under the Ministry of Home Affairs and it is responsible for the Marine Environment Protection and Maritime Zones of India. We have to select the correct answer. So, it is not under the Ministry of Home Affairs, it is under the Ministry of Defence. And yes, it is responsible for Marine Environment Protection and Maritime Zones of India. So, the correct answer would be option B. The Indian Coast Guard protects Indian Maritime's interest and enforces maritime law. It has jurisdiction over the territorial waters of India, including its contiguous zone and exclusive economic zone. It is responsible for marine environment protection in maritime zones of India and is the coordinating authority for response to oil spills in Indian waters. It operates under the Ministry of Defence. Moving ahead, consider the following statements regarding Midday Meal Scheme. It is the world's largest school feeding program. It is a centrally sponsored scheme and it was launched in the year 2005 under Ministry of Edu Education. So, we have to select the correct answer. Yes, Midday Meal is the world's largest school feeding program. So, the first statement is correct. And yes, it is a central sponsored scheme. Scheme That is also correct. That means its funding is divided between the states and the government, central government. And it was launched in the year 1995 under the Ministry of Education. So, the third statement being incorrect. The first two being correct, the correct answer would be option B. Recently, Ministry of Education has approved the proposal of providing monetary assistance to students through DBT of the cooking cost component of the midday meal scheme to all eligible children. MDM scheme is the world's largest school feeding program, a centrally sponsored scheme and launched in the year 1995 under the Ministry of Education. Moving ahead, with reference to Indimima's Jayanti, which of the following statement is correct. It is actually relevant to that it can help in designing hearing aids for humans. And recently, a new species of cricket named Indi Mimas Jayanti was found in the Kurra Caves of Chhattisgarh. This is a new species of cricket. It has been identified under the genus Arachnomimus Sasur 1897. It can help in designing hearing aids for humans. Moving ahead. Males of new Jayanti subgenus cannot produce sound and their females don't have ears. Moving ahead, who among the following was the founder of the Abhinav Bharat Society? Vinayak Damodar Sarvarkar was the founding member, was the founder of Abhinav Bharat Society. And Abhinav Bharat Society was a secret society. And it was founded by Vinayak Damodar Sarvarkar and his brother Ganesh Damodar Sarvarkar in the year 1904. Initially, it was founded in Nasik as Mitra Mela. The society was associated with several revolutionaries and political activists with branches in various parts of India and London. Moving ahead, consider the following statements regarding Kaziranga National Park. It was declared as a national park and a tiger reserve in the year 1974. National Highway 37 passes through the park and it is home to world's most one-horned rhinos. So we have to select the correct statement. If we talk about Kaziranga National Park, yes, it was declared as a national park in the year 1974, but a tiger reserve in the year 2007. Later on, it was declared as a tiger reserve. So, this statement is incorrect. While the rest of the two statements are definitely correct, the correct answer would be option C. Recently, the Assam government has approved a proposal to increase the firepower of guards of Kaziranga National Park and Tiger Reserve 
to provide commando training to them. We have already discussed the next two statements. So let's move on. And this also we have discussed. Let's move on to the practice question. Which of the following countries is the largest source of FDI in India? So you have to select the correct answer amongst these given options. I hope you'll be able to answer it correctly. That's it for today. Tomorrow we shall meet again with another segment. Until then, stay updated and thank you so much for watching.